Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we've got two HDAs for you. We've got the attribute wedge and we've got the bounding box layout. And I'll go through and show you how I've created this scene and how you can create loads of model variants using these two nodes. Right, let's dive into it. Right, so here we are on Houdini. I'm going to run you through the two nodes that we'll be showing today. So this is the attribute wedge node and this is the bounding box layout and i'll basically show you how we can use both of these together alongside any setup you make um, to basically produce loads and loads of variants of that asset so first of all i've got this crystal that i've made here and all i've done is just sub network a setup and promote a couple of parameters for generating crystal with kind of cracking and breakup there's a height there's a width, there's how many edges the, um, the crystal has. And now that I've made this, what I'd want to do is maybe make 20, 30 variants of that with different parameters, different ranges, like some small, some high, some with different edges, stuff like that. So this is where this node itself comes in handy. And how it works is when I, if I drop one down now, wedge it will spawn something like this you plug in any sub network into the top of it and then all you have to do is you basically pick the parameters that you want to wedge so what i would do is maybe i want to do something like different heights what i can do is i can copy this parameter make sure it's a reference and if i just type in the attribute that is on the top of it I want this as not a float, or maybe I do. Let's keep it as a float. And I want the range between three and let's say six. How many do I want? I want 10 of them, something like that. This will global seed will control the noises with inside the wedges here. So now this, what this will do is it will spawn me between three and six in the height of the crystal. It will spawn me 10 different variations. And when you hit build on this, what you'll get is you'll get something output like this. And if I dive inside into the wedge, you can see it's created, it's basically copy and pasted the setup that you have above, and it's randomly variated the seeds, randomly variated the width. This one I had set up with, I can show you the different ones I had on here. I had the seed between zero and a hundred height, edges between three and seven and I've unticked float because I wanted that as an integer. So this parameter itself is an integer. So for it to work correctly, he'll untick that and then crystal width. So now you have a really quick way of basically creating, you know, however many you want. If you wanted 30, you could easily do that. And the cool thing about this is if you have any updates to this crystal, so you just want to change the UVs, you want to add a new parameter, you can just hit build again and it will basically reproduce all of these with the same seed value so they'll be exactly the same crystals but with your updated setup and then all it's doing as well is adding a variant attribute with a number just ranging from zero to how many there are so that for later on you can use these so this is really cool but let's say i wanted to debug this and i wanted to see them all out laid out well, that's where this one comes in handy. So if I view this here, this is basically a kind of debugging, you know, exp you know, exploded view, but it's what it's doing is it's bounding box stacking the assets. So um, you have a different parameters here. So let me just untick this, you can see. If I just go into the debug mode here and hit bounds, you'll see exactly right what's happening. So if I go to the zero spacing and vertical spacing, you can see that if I change the grid type or this, all it's doing is stacking bounding box to bounding box, the tallest one next to each other so that there's no intersection per row. So if I change this back to this and change it back to like three, maybe you can see how the, the top of this red is in line with the bottom of this green. So it'll pick the tallest ones to stack green and then of the Kind of violet one at the end now. So on this. 
you can uh, you can untick color so you just have the attributes that will come in through here um you can also go into axis mode and this will either pick x-axis z-axis and this will just this will just keep repeating it down the axis so if you had 100 of them it would line 100 of them up like this i prefer to use the grid method just because you can pick the rows and columns so if i go for five like this five by five so that's pretty useful there's another example here that i've built is a kind of rock setup and this guy just randomly kind of creates little rubbly rocks at different angles um, there's a few parameters, so there's there's one that will basically reduce its height, and then there's also one that will move the pieces basically to the center um, to create like that. And I've done exactly the same method as this. I've done a 20 wedge. So if I click on this guy, this is now 20 of them stacked, which is super useful because you have all the ranges, but they're on top of each other, which is not easy to see. So then you just use the bounding box layout here. I've got this one set to XZ, so they're, they're on the ground. And now you can kind of easily see whether, you know, whether you got one that you don't like. And if you don't like one of them, you can obviously, you can jump into here and just change these guys. So if you wanted to change, you know, rock nine, oh, I didn't quite like that one. You can get, you can do that. So it's quite a nice way of setting them out, the assets out ready to use in your scatter and your scene. So cool, so right now we've seen this, let's have a little look at the lighting scene itself. So if I dive into here, this is me and I've set up a basic scatter for some of the crystals and done it on a rock and then there's a kind of a simple lighting set up here. So this will, you'll be able to get, have a look at the scene itself. So it's a kind of crystal and then there's some lighting and a camera facing at it. So how this kind of works is there's a rock surface itself. So if I get rid of this and view this, this is just, this is just for some breakup on, on the rock itself. It's the, basically the rocks scattered again with some big and small just to give it some breakup. Um, I can show you this through the camera. Let's render, let's just start the rendering. I can show you. Uh, switch that to comma. So we have something like this. Look through the camera. And I'll turn off the light. We have this for the kind of general rock setup. Then we have a crystal parameter here. Um, and I've turned off materials. So let me just turn the materials back on. So you'll have a crystal like this. And to get these crystals looking really nice, at the moment, the, the, the volume, the, the um, transmission doesn't have any kind of volume in the inside of it because it's not implemented with Karma yet. So what we're doing is we're actually instancing volumes in the inside of these crystals. So if I get rid of the crystal itself, you can see that we've got these kind of volumes with different colors and fall offs and some noise running through them. And that'll give it the kind of, not subsurface but it'll give it the kind of dispersion in the center of it and make it look a bit more full and less just like glass. So yeah, apart from that, um, the, we can go to the material. We've got the rock material itself, quite simple. We've got the crystal, which is just, just basically a glass shader there. And then this is kind of where most of it happens. Um, this is using the volume. We've got a noise that's running through the absorption and we're bringing in the actual volume itself. Uh, and then we've got another noise and that's going through the scattering. And it's basically going between kind of two colors, um, as you can see here. Yeah, two, two of these colors based on the world noise, which will give you this pink and purple and different kind of breakup of that. So, so yeah, and then there's just a kind of a simple lighting stuff like that. So anyway, I hope you found this uh, interesting. It's kind of like breakdown of this scene and stuff. And if you give this HDA download, you can have a play. I'll include this scene as well so you can see how I've set up the crystal instancing and the volume instancing, which is quite useful for doing this kind of stuff. Um, as always, if you've got any kind of feedback or anything, uh, anything to implement, then give me a shout. Uh, and uh, yeah, check in the comments and then we'll um, hopefully see you in the next video.